Alright boys and girls, this is Mr. Manis here again with another super cool video and this might be one of the most important videos you guys have watched all year. This is a video to refresh your memory on how to solve quadratics. That I know there's an opportunity for improvement for us to make sure we get these down. This is so incredibly important guys. There are going to be a lot of quadratics on the EOC. You're going to have to know this next year in advanced algebra because this is pretty much all we do is solving cubics and cortics and factoring and completing the square and all this kind of stuff so we have to know how to do this alright so first thing you guys will notice is the problems on this video that I'm about to go through are different than the ones that I did uh, on the sheet that I gave you guys I did that on purpose because I did not want you guys to come to this video and just copy down the answers okay so I'm gonna work through the same types of problems that are on your sheet that you guys are supposed to be doing uh, on your own and I want you guys to go back and I'm going to show you how to check these on your calculator and I'm purposely, I've changed my mind, I purposely decided not to post the solutions to your assignment because I'm going to show you how to check your work. I want you guys to go back and check your own work. You don't need to post the solutions. You will be able to figure out whether or not you did this correctly or not. Now, the way that I teach quadratus, guys, I got our little cheat sheet here. This is the same exact thing that I have up on my wall in my classroom. To me, there are seven different ways to solve a quadratic equation. How do I know I have a quadratic equation? Because the high highest exponent of my equation is a 2, so I'm in quadratic land. Seven different ways. The GCF method, you're always looking to see if you can pull out a GCF. Special cases, square root method, factoring A is 1, factoring A is not 1, and if all those first five fail, then the last resort is quadratic formula or completing the square, which both of those always work. Okay, So I'm going to go through each of these, but I'm just going to keep this little cheat sheet here for us. So this first one says, solve each equation by factoring. Um, we're going to do this first one using the GCF method. Okay, so we go back to our cheat, uh, cheat sheet. I always want to see if I can pull out a GCF, factor out a number, but there is actually a GCF method. And the way to do this, or to recognize this, is when I don't have that C term. Okay, so my basic quadratic equation is AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Most of the time in quadratics, we're going to have a trinomial, three terms. We might only have two terms sometimes. 95% of the time in quadratic land, you're going to end up with two solutions to your quadratic. Every once in a while, you might only have one solution. And every once in a blue moon, you might not have any solutions. You're, there are no real solutions. They're actually imaginary solutions that you guys will learn about next year in advanced algebra. But for purposes of our second geometry, you would have no real solution if you have a negative inside the radical when you try to do the square root method or quadratic formula because you can't take the square root of the negative. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. I'll try to make this video as short as possible, but understand we spent a month on quadratics. Okay, I didn't have the opportunity to teach you guys this, so um, I'm going to try to wrap up weeks of stuff all here in, in this one video. Let's jump in. It's GCF method. Okay, I don't have a C term. I've got the A term. I've got the AX squared term. I've got the BX term. I don't have a number. Okay, so when I don't have the C term, I can use the GCF. And simply, I'm going to pull out what is the greatest common factor. They're both divisible by 7, and they both have an N. I can steal an N from each of these guys. I can pull it out. So if I factor out a 7N that is common, the greatest common factor, this common to both terms, I'm going to be left with, how do I figure out what's left over with? I just simply take each term and divide by what I'm pulling out. Okay, So 7n, divided, 7n squared divided by 7n is just going to leave me with an n. And then negative 49n divided by 7n, the n's cancel, and that just leaves me with um, minus 7. Okay, now our zero property product says if I multiply two things together and get zero, one of those two bad boys has to be zero. Either the 7n has to be zero, or the n minus 7 has to be 0. So you're going to set each one equal to 0. Well, if I set 7n equal to 0 and divide by 7, I literally get n is equal to 0. So when you do the GCF method, one of your roots, your solutions, your zeros, your answers is always going to be 0. If I set the n minus 7 equal to 0, I just move the 7 to the other side, my other solution is going to be positive 7. Okay, so the GCF method is by far the easiest way to solve a quadratic. You just pull out the GCF, set each one of these guys equal to zero and get your two numbers. And one of your answers is always going to be zero because you're going to be pulling out an n out of both terms when you don't have that c term. You will always have an x squared and an x term. So you will always be able to pull out that variable. Okay, Let's go to the next one. Do I have a c term? No, I don't. I've got the ax squared. I've got the bx term, but I don't have the c term. So I can pull out a GCF. What's common to both terms? 
2v. So I can pull out a 2v. What will that leave me with? I mean, this is what you need to be doing in your head. But y'all should be getting to the point where y'all can just do this in your head without writing this out. So 2v squared divided by 2v. I'm going to be left with a v. 16v divided by 2v is going to leave me with a positive 8. I'm going to set each one of those equal to 0. So one of my solutions will always be 0. If I set 2v equal to 0, I'm going to do 0. And then what do I do here? I flippy flip. I just flip the signs. So I get 0 and negative 8. Okay, so those are two my, my two answers. Now, I want to show you guys how to check this. Okay, so how do I check this? I'm going to do this on my calculator. Okay, so on my calculator, I'm going to take my answers and I'm simply going to plug them back into the left side and see if I equal 0. We are saying that there are two numbers on planet Earth that we can stick into this equation that will equal 0. Well, let's check it. If I plug in a 0, 2 times 0 squared is just 0, plus 16 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. Okay, so good. 0 works. 0 is always going to work on the GCF. Let's plug in negative 8. Now, guys, when you plug in negative 8, you cannot do this. You cannot do negative 8 squared. I talked about this in an earlier video. Your calculator does order of operations. It turns it into a negative 64. That's not right. So I need to put that in parentheses. 2 times parentheses negative 8 squared plus 16 times negative 8. I better get what? I better get 0. Guys, that took me 4 seconds. Okay. Take your answer, plug it back in, and make sure your quadratic equals 0. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop the video here. I need you guys to do me a favor. Okay. At the top of your paper, over here on the top left, I need to get a feel from you guys before I go through this video. I want to get a feel for how comfortable are you on a scale from 1 to 10. How comfortable are you with quadratics? Okay, so I just want you to write that answer up here at the top. So if you're kind of weak, you're like, oh, Mr. Bernice, I don't know, I'm, I'm a 3. Okay, I just want you to write a 3. If you're like, Mr. Bernice, I, I know this stuff. I learned it. I didn't memorize it. I actually learned it. I'm a 10. Okay, so write a 10 up there. Give me a number on a scale from 1 to 10. I'm trying to get a, a feel, a gauge from you guys. How comfortable are you with quadratics? Okay, so give me that number at the top. All right. Uh, let's keep going. All right, what's the second thing on our little cheat sheet? Okay, so if you can't pull out a GCF, if there is a C term, let's go to the next one. The next one says special cases. Okay, special cases. So a special case is a perfect square trinomial or a different squares. Okay, so there's no need to do all this other stuff if you can just do the shortcut special case. There are two types of special cases. One is a perfect square trinomial and the other is a difference of squares. Okay, so in this first one, you might look at this and say, oh my gosh, i got to factor this one. A is not 1. i got to do A times C and draw the curtain and split. Well, let's, let's take a look here for a second. I want to check and see if this is a perfect square trinomial. And to do that, I want to just check, is that first term, is that a perfect square? Can I take the square root of 9x squared? Well, yes, I can. The square root of 9x squared is 3x. And then I look at the back term. I look at the positive 16. Can I take the square root of positive 16? Well, yes, I can. That's 4. Now here's the catch, guys. This is what everybody struggles to remember. If those first and third terms are perfect squares, I gotta check and see when I multiply these guys and double it, do I get the middle term? I don't really care about the sign of the middle term. I just want to see is 3x times 4, 12x. When I double that, do I get 24? Wow, well, yes, I do. So if that's the case, all you gotta do, guys, is bring down these numbers and put a parenthesis squared around it. 3x4 squared. Now, how do I figure out what sign goes in the middle? It's the sign of the middle term. In this case, since that's negative, I'm going to put a negative there. If this had been a positive 24, this would be 3x plus 4 squared. And this is going to be equal to 0. And now to solve this, I simply take the square root of both sides. The square root of 0 is just 0, so I'll get 3x minus 4 equals 0. Move the 4 to the other side and divide by 3, I get x is equal to 4 thirds. And we're done. So this is that 5% of the time where once in a blue moon, we only have one answer. There's only one answer on planet Earth that goes into that equation that works. It is not plus or minus 4 thirds. Okay, so if I check that, if I type in negative 4 thirds, you'll see that doesn't work. 9 times negative, oops, 9 times negative 3 fourths squared, okay, minus 24 times negative, um, oh, it's 4 thirds, I'm sorry, let me back up. 9 times negative 4 thirds, okay, minus 24 times negative 4 thirds, okay, plus 16. Does that equal 0? No, it doesn't, okay, so that's why only the positive works. That's that one time where we only get one solution. 
That's it. So you got to check. Is that a perfect square? Is that a perfect square? When you take the two square roots and multiply them and double it, do you get the middle term? You got yourself a perfect square trinomial. There's no reason to factor when A is not 1. No reason to do quadratic form formula, any of that stuff. All right, number four is the second type of special case, which is a difference of squares. So it's going to be similar, but this is only when I have two terms. I want to see, can I take the square root of the first term? Yes, I can. That's 5x. Can I take the square root? Now, when I only have two terms, I don't care about that sign. I just want to see, can I take the square root of that physical number? Square root of 49 is 7. So if I can do that, guys, I have two perfect squares. I literally have a difference of two squares. My first square is 5x by 5x. Guess what? That gives me an area of 25x squared. Okay, my second square is 7 by 7. That gives me an area of 49. And then I'm subtracting those two guys. I'm It's a difference of physical squares. Okay, now how does this actually factor? One of your binomials is going to be positive, one's going to be negative. So I've got 5x plus 7, 5x minus 7. If I had x squared minus 9 equals 0, that would just factor as x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay. Now, how do you actually solve this? You've got to set these equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to move the 7 to the other side and divide by 5. So one of my answers is going to be negative 7 fifths. Over here, when I move the 7 to the other side and divide by 5, I'll get positive 7 fifths. Okay, so I've got negative 7 fifths and positive 7 fifths. Plug those back into the equation. Check, make sure it equals 0. All right, what's next on our sheet? If I can't pull out a GCF, if I can't do a quick shortcut special case, let me see if I can do the square root method. That's the next easiest. But now, guys, on this one, you can only do the square root method when you don't have the B term. Okay, so when I don't have that B term, all I have is an AX squared and a C term. That's when I can use the square root method. So let's take a look. All right, there's my X squared term. Where's the BX term? I don't have it, okay? So this is where I can use the square root method. How do you do that? You're simply going to isolate the x squared, get that guy by itself, and then take the square root for the square root method. Okay, so I need to add 5 to both sides. So I've got x squared is equal to 59 plus 5, which is 64. And then now what? Square root method, take the square root. And x is equal to 8. That is the sound of Mario dying because you forgot that when you take the square root of a positive number, you will always generate a plus or minus. It is not 8. It is plus or minus 8. Okay, Remember, 95% of the time, we have two solutions to our quadratic. Let's check it. If you don't believe me, let's check it. Let's type in a negative 8. Okay? So again, parentheses, negative 8 squared minus 5. That better be what? That better be the right-hand side of the equation. That better be 59. Okay, guys, it's real simple. Take five seconds, 10 seconds, plug your answers back in and make sure that the left side of the equation equals the right side of the equation. That's why I always preach, check your work. In a lot of math, you can go back and do that. Number six, do I have the BX term? Hmm, no, I don't. There's no BX term. I, ha I have the M term, M squared term. I don't have the M term. So let's isolate the M squared. I'm going to add seven to both sides. So I have 8M squared equals 281 plus seven is 288. I still need it. I'm not ready to take the square root yet. Okay, I don't have m squared by itself. I've got to isolate that guy. So let's divide by 8. I'm going to get m squared is equal to 288. 288 divided by 8. That gives me 36. Okay. Take the square root, and the square root of 36 is what? Plus or minus 6. Yes, plus or minus 6. Okay, moving along. All right, let's recap. GCF, pull out the GCF and solve. Special case, uh, perfect square trinomial, difference of squares, square root method, isolate the x squared, take the square root of both sides. You're going to generate a plus or minus. Okay. All right, if that doesn't work, okay, so we do have a C term. We do have a B term. We've got a regular trinomial. Okay, it's not a special case. Now I'm looking to see can I factor when A is 1 or can I factor when A is not 1. Okay, so the next couple of questions, factoring when A is 1. Okay, again, if this understood number in front of the x squared is just, if there's nothing there, that's an understood to be a 1. Okay, can I factor when a equals 1? Okay, there, the number is, that is an understood 1. Okay, so now all I need to do is look at the c term. What are the factors, what two numbers multiply to give me 35 to add to the middle number, 12? 
What are the first two numbers that pop in your head for 35? 7 and 5. Did that add to 12? Yes, it does. So factors is x plus 7 times x plus 5 equals 0. And again, guys, if I'm going too fast through this, pause and rewatch the video. But I'm trying to make sure this is not an hour long video. Okay, what do I do with the signs? Flippy flip. Okay, x is equal to negative 7 and negative 5. Okay, again, we can plug this back in and check and make sure that it equals 0. All right, number 8, we need our quadratic set equal to 0. So we've got 6x squared minus 12x. So we need to add 7 to both sides. That's going to give me minus 48 equals 0. Factor when 8, oh, hmm, wait a minute. A is not 1. Huh, that's weird. It says to factor when A is 1, but A is not 1. Uh-huh, that's right. Let's go back to our cheat sheet. What should we do every single time, guys? See if you can pull out a GCF. Now, I have an arrow between these two because if you can immediately recognize that it's a special case, even if you can pull out a GCF, then you might not need to pull out the GCF. Just go ahead and factor it as a special case. So that's why I kind of say these two are interchangeable. But you should always look to see if they're a greatest common factor, a number that's divisible, or maybe they all have the same variable. Maybe you can factor out an X from all three terms. So these are interchangeable. Huh. Is there something common to all three? Yeah, they're all divisible by 6. So let's factor out a 6. That's going to leave me with x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Now what happens to the GCF? It disappears. Because if I divide both sides by 6, that just cancels, and 0 over anything is just 0. So I'm left with this easily factorable a equals 1 trinomial. What are the factors of negative 8 that add to negative 2? That's going to be, now when the C term is negative, one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative, and the sign of the middle term will tell you which one the bigger number is. So since that's negative, the bigger one has to be negative. So the 4 is bigger, so it's going to factor as x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. What do I do? Since there, these are 1's in front of the x's, flippy flip. And x is equal to 4 and negative 2. Okay, let's check that real quick. I like to check these. Okay, let's plug in the negative. Let's plug in the negative 2, make sure that works. Okay, so let's go 6, parentheses, negative 2 squared, minus 12 times negative 2, minus 55, and that better equal what? That better equal negative 7, the right-hand side of the equation. And it does. So I, you got a winning lottery ticket in your pocket, guys. Just check these things, and now you're 100% confident. Yes, I got this question correct. Now, technically, you should plug in both of those. You know, but if you plug in one and that works, then chances are you've done it correctly. But just know, just understand, I'm encouraging you guys to take both numbers and plug them in if time permits. Don't ever turn in a quiz or test before you go back and do this stuff with every single number. All right, what's next on our sheet? Okay, if I can't factor when A is 1, I need to factor when A is not 1. Okay, so in this case, A is not 1. Pull this up so you don't see it. Okay. A is not 1. Okay, so when A is not 1, here's what you do. you got to multiply A times C. Okay, you multiply the first number. I don't care about the variables. Multiply the A, the A times the C. Okay, so I'll multiply these two numbers together. All right, that's going to give me a big number. 6 times, I don't even care about the negative. 6 times negative 84 gives me 504. We can say negative 504. Okay, now... Now, this is a temporary number. When you do factor when A is not 1, this is a temporary number. We need to find two numbers that multiply to give me this temporary number that add to equal negative 30. Now, when this C term is negative, that means one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. So I'm basically asking what two numbers multiply that gives me this that are 30 apart from each other. Okay, so how do you do that? You go to Y equals on your graphing calculator. You type in the number. I don't care about the negative. I'm just going to type in 504 divided by x, number divided by x, and then we're going to press second table. And now this is going to give me the list of all the numbers that multiply that equal 504, okay? But I'm looking for two numbers that are 30 apart from each other. No, no, no ah, there we go. 12 and 42 are, four, are 30 apart from each other. So this guy is going to split into that 12 and that 42. Now, one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. So the sign of the middle term will tell you which one the bigger one has to be. So since this is negative, the 42 has to be negative and the 12 has to be positive. Now, I'm going to take these two terms and I'm going to split this B term. So I'm going to split this and I'm going to bring down the first and third terms. So I just bring down the 6A squared 
I'm going to split the negative 30 into 12, negative 30a into 12a and negative 42a. It does not matter, guys, which one you match up with the 6. They're both divisible by 6. Why are they both divisible by 6? Because 6 is a factor of negative 504 because I multiply 6 times 84. So, of course, these two numbers, are, is going to, uh, 6 is going to be a factor of these two numbers. I'll match it up with the 12. That makes the most sense to me. So, I'll match it up with the 12a. Okay, and then I'll match up the negative 42 with the 84. So minus 42a minus 84. So guys, all I've done is I've taken negative $30 and I've broken it into $12 plus $42. That is still negative $30. Well, why'd you do that, Mr. Manise? Well, now I now have four different terms that I can factor by grouping. Draw your little curtain, draw your little wall, and I'm going to factor out the GCF from the first two and the last two terms. What's the GCF of 6A and 12A? It is 6A. So I'll pull out a 6A. That's going to leave me with A plus 2. Here, now guys, this is real important. Very, very important. A lot of students forget this. When you're doing this factoring by grouping, and when that front number, and when that front number, and either the first two or the last two, when that front number is a negative, guys, you must pull out the negative. You've got to pull it out, okay? So you can't just, now the, the number, what's divisible? What goes into both of these numbers? Well, if you're not sure, see if 42 goes in the big number. Does 84 divided by 42? Is that an even number? Yeah, it is. But you've got to pull out the negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative 42. I can't pull out an A because the 84 doesn't have an A. Okay, so I'm going to pull out a negative 42. That better leave me with what? It's got to match this other binomial. So A plus 2. Let's just check that. Negative 42 times A, yeah, that's negative 42A. Negative 42 times 2, yeah, that's negative 84. These guys have to match. If they don't match, guys, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You've done something wrong. So now one of the factors of this original trinomial is that guy, the matching binomial, okay, these two guys, all right, and then my other factor is what? It's going to be the other stuff left on the outside. So it's going to be that guy and that guy, 6A minus 42, okay. So now, set this equal to zero. Connect, so this one I can flippy flip. So a equals negative two. This one I gotta set that equal to zero. So I gotta solve six a minus forty a equals zero. Move the forty eight to the other side. That's forty eight divided by six. That gives me eight. Or excuse me, that gives me um, um, let me make sure. I'm, yeah, negative two and um, oh, I'm sorry, I wrote that down. I was about to say, I was wondering what I did. Okay, yeah, see, even teachers make mistakes. That's a 42. I misread my own handwriting. 42 divided by 6 is 7. Okay, so I've got A equals negative 2 and 7. Now, hopefully you guys, at the beginning of the problem, I did this on purpose. Hopefully you guys, at the beginning of the problem, were screaming at the video, Mr. Manis, Mr. Manis, wait a minute, can I just pull out a GCF? Yes, you can, but I did this on purpose. I wanted you guys to see this with your own eyes. When you solve a quadratic equation, boys and girls, and you get two whole numbers, that means that you could have easily factored it, okay? So I got this little other little cheat sheet right here. Let's go back to the original equation. 6a squared minus 30a uh, minus 84, okay? What can I pull out? What are all of those numbers divisible by? Well, if you're not sure, start with the biggest numbers and see, does 6 go into both of those? Well, is 84 divisible by 6? Yes, it is. Okay, so I can pull out a 6. That's going to leave me with a squared minus 5a. 6 goes into 84 14 times minus 14 equals 0. That just goes away. So I have a squared minus 5a minus 14 equals 0. What are the factors of negative 14 to add to 5? That's going to be negative 7 and positive 2. Flippy flip, and I get 7 and negative 2. Yikes. Look at that, guys. We could have just pulled out a GCF and just factored it. There's no reason to do A times C. There's no reason to do quadratic formula. Just pull out the GCF and just factor it. Okay, that's so much easier. You're going to save yourself a lot of time. There was a word we used all the time in industry when I was an engineer, efficiency. You need to be efficient, okay? All right, let's go on to the next one. Now, let's set our quadratic equal to 0. So I have 7x plus, uh, squared plus 10x, add 3 to both sides, that's minus 8 equals 0. All right, let's check. Can I pull out a GCF? Obviously I can't because nothing. 7 is not a factor of either of those two numbers. 7 doesn't go into those. So now, yes, I do need to do the a times c. 
7 times negative 8 is negative 56. Now this one you shouldn't need your calculator for. Okay, what are two numbers that multiply to give you negative 56 that add to positive 10? Okay, it was 56 divisible by 8, uh, 7 and 8. Uh, what, about, uh, what about 10 and 4? Oh, excuse me, 14 and 4. Two numbers that multiply to give you 56 that are 10 apart from each other. Okay, and so it's going to be 10 and 4. Now, which one has to be positive? Which one has to be, uh, I keep saying 10. Why do I keep saying that? Oh, I'm ringing the bell on myself. <laughs> ringing the bell on myself. 14 and 4. Okay, 14 and 4 are 10 apart from each other. The bigger one is positive, so the 14 has to be positive. That means the, neg the 4 has to be negative. So I'm going to split this into 7x squared. I'm going to match the 7 with the 14. It sounds reasonable to me. Plus 14x. I'll match up the negative 4x with the 8. Okay, so I split $10 into $14 and negative $4. Now I can draw my curtain in group. I can pull out a 7x, and that's going to leave me with x plus 2. Now what do we need to do here, guys? we got to pull out that negative. Pull out the negative 4, and that's going to leave me with, guess what? x plus 2 equals 0. My binomials match. Good. So one of my factors is the x plus 2. My other factor is the stuff on the outside. 7x minus 4. Okay. Now this one, I can flippy flip. x equals negative 2. This one, I need to solve that. Move the 4 to the other side. Divide by 7. I get... Um, four sevenths. Okay, let's check that. That's a fraction. I want to show you guys how to check that. That can be a little bit tricky. Okay, so let's go back to our original problem. I'm going to type, we think one of the answers is four sevenths, so let's check it. Seven times parentheses, four divided by, divided by seven time, um, squared. I'm just plugging in four sevenths for x. Plus, now here I don't need parentheses because I'm just multiplying 10 times 4 sevenths, so the order of operations will take care of itself. So 10 times 4 divided by 7, all right, and then plus, um, and that's minus, minus 11, that better equal what? That better equal the right-hand side of the equation, negative 3. Guys, it doesn't take but just 5, 10 seconds to plug this in. That lets you know, hey, I did it right. I can move on to the next question, or wait a minute, I made a mistake. Let me go back and see if I can find my mistake. Okay, let's keep going. Ah, completing the square. Okay, so remember, guys, completing the square and the quadratic formula should be your last resort. Now, in my opinion, guys, I would never, ever, ever complete the square when A is not 1. Okay, don't do that. That gets really complicated. You would have to factor out a number, divide every term by that number. You have some nasty fractions. You can take in half of B squared with decimals and fractions. It just gets messy. So if your A is 1 and you can't factor it, okay, so if we try GCF, that doesn't work. We do all, try all these. We can't factor it. We can't do A times C. Then we're, we're last resort is these two. I would only consider completing the square when that guy is a 1. Just trust me on that. Now, if it is a 1, you may proceed. The, we can't pull out a GCF. There are no factors of 19 to add to negative 16. That doesn't work. So, okay, let's complete the square. Now, this is the only method, guys, where you don't want your quadratic set equal to 0. Okay, you want it set equal to a number. This is the only time I'm going to take the C term and move it to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to do N squared minus 16N, and here's where I'm going to leave a blank. Hopefully this is the way you guys were taught. N squared minus 16N plus blank equals, when I move that 19 to the other side, and this is public enemy number one for this strategy, guys, students always forget to change that sign. They will leave this as a 19. When you move it to the other side, that changes the sign. And then I'm going to have a plus blank. Okay, so I've got a plus blank on the left and a plus blank on the right. Now, the whole purpose of completing the square, guys, the whole gist is that we're taking something that is not a square. I cannot make a square out of n squared minus 16 plus 19. I'm going to add a number to it that is going to force this to become a perfect square. Now, how do I do that? There's a saying that I always say, how do you com actually complete the square? Guys, it's real simple. And the saying is half of b squared. Half of b squared, half of b squared, half of b squared. I cannot say that enough. Half of b squared. So my b term is this guy right here. Okay. So if I take half of negative 16, and you do include the negative, although it doesn't matter because you're squaring it. If I take half of 16 and I square that guy, again, it doesn't matter because about the negative you're squaring it. So half of 16 is 8. When I square that, I get 64. Okay. I'm actually going to put this 
I'm going to put this in a different color because I need to make sure you guys are visually seeing this. Half of B squared is 64. Okay, I'm going to simply take that number and plug it in to the blanks. Now, this is a seesaw. Equation is a seesaw. I've got to keep the seesaw balanced. So if I drop 64 bricks on the left side, I've got to drop 64 bricks on the right side to keep my seesaw balanced. Okay, I can't just pull a number out of thin air and just add it to the equation. It doesn't work like that. Okay, now what, Mr. Meese, why did I do that? N squared minus 16 is not a perfect square. When I add the 64, huh, that's interesting. N squared is a perfect square. Let's go back up to our special cases. Can I take the square root of that? Yes. Can I take the square root of that? Yes. When I multiply the two factors and double it, do I get the middle term? Yes. All right, so check this out. Okay, N squared is a perfect square. 64 is a perfect square. When I take the... Um, when I take the squares, okay, the square of 1 is 1, the, the square root of 64 is 8. When I double 8, I get 16. So the whole purpose of this is to force this to become one of our special cases up here. And now I can factor this. How do you factor this? I'm looking at this guy. I'm doing this in a different color. How do you factor this trinomial? Well, if you go back to your special cases, um, basically when A is 1, it's always going to be half of that guy. Okay, so I always like to say, how does this perfect square trinomial factor? It factors as half of B. Okay, if this is confusing, guys, pause the video, go back and watch it again. Watch as many times as you need. I'm forcing this to become a special case. It will always factor as half of that middle number. Half of that middle term is negative 8. So it's going to factor as n minus 8 squared. Okay, why is that? Well, if I take my cheat sheet over here again... Okay, if I do n minus 8 times n minus 8, and I multiply that, if I FOIL that out, that's n squared minus 8n minus 8n plus 64, and I get n squared minus 16n plus 64. That's why we say it's got a double, guys, because I've got two of these. When I break it down and FOIL it out, I'll have two of these middle numbers. So when I factor n squared minus 16n plus 64, it's always going to be half of that number squared. I've got two of these guys. I've got an n minus 8 and another n minus 8. So that's just n minus 8 squared. Now on the right side of the equation, I'll just add those numbers together. 64, 64 minus 19 is 45. Okay. Now, how do I, where do I go from here? So completing the square is tricky because you've got to memorize all these steps. Okay, you've got to know it. You've got to learn it. Now I'm simply going to take the square root of both sides. Okay. When I take the square root of n minus 8 squared, I get n minus 8. Okay. Now, when I take the square root of 45, I get the square root of 45. Nope, you do not get the square root of 45. You get plus or minus the square root of 45. Okay, you cannot forget that, guys. Now, to solve this, I'm going to move the 8 to the other side. So my answer is n equals positive 8 plus or minus the square root of 45. Now, the directions say to round this to the nearest tenth. So I need to get two decimals here because the square, 45 is not a perfect square. So to get my two answers, guys, I'm simply going to do positive 8 plus the square root of 45. That's going to give me one number, okay, 14.7. And then my other answer is going to be 8 minus the square root of 45 because we generate a plus or minus. So my two answers are 14.7 and 1.3. 14.7 and 1.3. Okay, that is how you complete the square. Okay, second one here. All right, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. Now, I, again, I need just the B squared term and the B term. So I need to move the 38 to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to have B squared plus 11B plus what? Blank equals, when I subtract 38 from both sides, I'm going to have negative 30 plus what? Plus another blank. Now, how do I complete the square? Half of b squared, half of b squared, half of b squared. Okay, half of b squared. When I take half of 11 and square that, that's 4.5, or excuse me, 5.5. .5, so 11 divided by 2, make sure I can see this, 5.5. .5, when I square that, I actually get 30.25. Okay, so half of b squared is just 30.25. So that number goes there. 30.25, and then it also goes here, 30.25, okay? Now, why did I do that? I can now force this to become a perfect square trinomial. How does this guy factor? It factors as half of B, okay? Half of 11 is 5.5, .5, or you can keep it as 11 uh, over 2, but I prefer decimals. So it's going to factor as half of that number. 
be plus 5.5 squared. It's always going to factor as something plus something squared, um, something minus something squared. Okay, And then over here, I just combine my like terms. Third, negative 30 plus 30.5 is just a quarter, 0 0.25. Okay. Now what I'll do, I take the square root. What is the square root of both sides? When I take the square root of b plus 5.5, I just get b plus 5.5. When I take the square root of a quarter, the square root of 0.25, that's a half. So that's going to equal 0 0.5. Okay. So now it's not going to equal 0 0.5. It's going to equal what? Plus or minus 0 0.5. Don't forget that plus or minus. So now when I move the 5.5 to the other side, I've got b equals negative 5.5 plus or minus 0 0.5. Okay, so now one of my answers is going to be negative 5.5 plus 0.5, which is negative 5, and then negative 5.5 minus 0 0.5. That gives me negative. Um, oh, sorry. Negative 5.5 minus um, uh, 0.5. And that gives me negative 6. Okay. So my solutions are negative 5 and negative 6. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. These are whole numbers. Wait a minute. I did this on purpose, guys. I did it on purpose. If you go back to the original equation, okay, b squared plus 11b, um, after we, uh, if we set this equal to 0, and if I subtract 8 from both sides, I get plus 30 equals 0. Huh. What are the factors of 30? that add to 11. Oh, it's 5 and 6. So it just factors as b plus 5, b plus 6. Flippy flip. I get negative 5 and negative 6. Okay. Negative 5, negative 6. Look at that. We spent all this time doing all this work when I could have just factored it. Okay. I'm doing all this on purpose because I see time and time again students trying to use quadratic formula on something they can easily factor. Don't waste your time doing that. Okay. All right. Last home stretch here, guys. Home stretch. I also need Nyana Thomas to report to room 628 at this time, please. Okay. Nyana Thomas, you're needed in room 628. All right, home stretch, quadratic formula. So once again, if I can't do any of the first five methods, then I can either use the quadratic formula or complete the square. I prefer to use quadratic formula, but you'll notice in both of these problems, guys, there's not an A. A does not equal 1, so don't even consider, don't even blink. Don't even think about using the completing the square strategy when a is not one. It's just too complicated. All right. Now we do know how to. We need to know how to complete the square. I just wouldn't recommend it when a is not one. So what's our quadratic formula? Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. Quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I did that. That just happened. Okay, now we need to get our quadratic formula set equal to zero. Okay, so I've got 3n squared plus 6n minus 105 equals zero. Okay, all right, so um, let's, now I'm a big advocate, guys, of when you do the quadratic formula, come out here to the side and just take just a moment and write down what the a, b, and c are. I just promise you, students who do this, I found make a lot fewer mistakes. Okay. Just write it out. Now you don't have to do any more thing. You just look over here at the numbers. Okay, so we've got negative b, we got negative six, plus or minus the square root of b squared, six squared, minus four times a times c. Okay, all over two times a. Okay, now at this point, guys, I've done this on the previous video. I'll do it again. I type in just the discriminant, just the part under the radical. Okay, so I'm going to type in six squared. Minus exactly the way I see it. Minus 4 times 3 times negative 105. And I get a number. Okay. I get um, I get 54. Okay. Oh, well, I pressed I press that wrong. 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 105. Sorry. I get that number. Okay. So let's take this one step at a time. So I've got negative 6 plus or minus the square root of that 1296 number. Okay, all over 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, now let's check and see if 1296 is a perfect square. What is the square root of the second answer? What is the square root of that? Oh, it's a, it's a perfect square. Okay, so it's 36. So basically it's negative 6 plus or minus 36 all over 6. Okay, so I'm going to have two answers. 
n equals one of my answers that's negative six plus 36. That's 30 divided by six, which is five. My other answer is negative six minus 36. That's negative 42 over six, that's negative seven. So my answers are five and negative seven. Huh, wait a minute though, wait a minute. I got whole numbers, I got whole numbers. What does that mean? Oh man, I could have factored this guy. Okay, so let's go back to the original problem. Set it equal to zero. 3n squared uh, plus 6n minus 105 equals zero. Oh man, can I pull out a GCF? I didn't think that was divisible by three. Well, check it. Is 105 divisible by three? Oh, it is, it's 35. So if I pull out a three, that's gonna leave me with n squared plus two n um, minus 35 equals zero. The three just disappears. What are the factors of negative 35 to add to two? That's gonna be seven and negative five. Flippy flip, and I get equal, n equals negative seven and five. Oh man. I could have factored that. Okay, that's what y'all need to be thinking. Always look, can I pull out a GCF? Can I make my life easier? Now, I asked you guys to watch every second of this video, so hopefully if you got to this point, good on you. I want you guys at the top of this sheet, I need to get a feel, I need to get a gauge. You gave me a number at the beginning of the video. How did you feel about quadratics? Okay, after going through this, I want you to give me another number. After going through this, now what is your comfort level with quadratics? If it's still the same, if you're still just confused, write the same number. You won't hurt my feelings, okay? If you think that this really helps you, you've got a better understanding of quadratics, give me the second number. So maybe you start off as a three, now you feel like you're a six. Maybe you feel like you're a nine, I don't know. I want a number pre-video and I want the number post-video so I can get a, an idea, okay? All right, this video is already a little bit longer than I, I thought it was. Um, so I'm going to fly through this last one. Okay, this one you can't factor. So 5p squared minus 6p uh, minus 23 equals 0. a equals 5. b equals negative 6. I want to do this one because I put this one on here on purpose. Okay, but now b is negative. So it's negative, negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now, guys, you got to put that in parentheses. Please put that in parentheses. Minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a, okay? So I type all this in my calculator. you got to put that in parentheses. So I'm going to do parentheses negative 6 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 23. That comes out to be 496. So I've got negative, negative, make that a positive. So I've got 6 plus or minus the square root of 496 all over 10, okay? Now, the square root of 496 is not a perfect square, okay, it's some number. So what I need to do on my calculator is I can do this in, parent I can do this in parentheses. I can do 6 plus the square root of 496. I need two sets of parentheses for my calculator, and then I'm going to divide that by 10. So one of my answers is 2.8, and then I need to do parentheses 6 minus the square root of 496, two parentheses divided by 10, and I get that number. So I get 2.8 and negative 1.6. 2.8 and negative 1.6. Now, what I want to show you guys is how to plug this back in, okay? I'm going to use the second answer feature. So I'm going to say 5 parentheses second answer, that answer, squared, okay, minus 23, okay? That better equal 6 times this number. Negative 1.62710575. Okay, I get the exact same number. So the left hand side matches the right hand side. Okay, sorry this the video was so long, guys, but um, hopefully, you know, we really needed to work on quadratics. So hopefully, you got a little bit better understanding about all the different methods and strategies for solving a quadratic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want you to go back now and finish, uh, finish those different. Uh, problems on the work from home sheet that's going to be due on Thursday. We will see you on the next video.